Hello students and welcome to this translation into English module presented to you by Ahmed. Um, with this module what I'll do is first teach you some of the basic principles of translation such as transference and word-for-word -word translation um, what else and yeah I mean those were or literal translation yeah that's pretty much what I'll teach you today but bear in mind that I'll only teach you briefly what these concepts are in translation because I did say that um, theory isn't really important as much as practice um, is anyway so let's start with transference what is transference Transference in translation means that you can use the same word from the source language and put it in the target language. Why? Because both of the words happen to exist in both of the languages. And this happens a lot in modern day vo vocabularies like the word computer, like the word dollar, like the word um, mobile or mobile. Depends on how you pronounce the word. Uh, all of these, because they are shared cross-culturally from you know on, in, in different cultures, on a different um, scale, um, what happens is that you can use the same word from the source language and put it in the target language. Case in point, let me give you some examples. You see sentence number one. Now, if we take the words, if we take the word one by one, you can see right here the word decode, yeah? So, decode in English is also, um, you can say decoration, that's also correct. Uh, you can say the decoration of my room is ugly, yeah? You can see decoration, decode, there is a sort of resemblance um, between the two words, and the reason is that both of them share the same. Um, common source. The next one is say ambulance hot na dochoskiren. Okay. Ambulance comes from the English word ambulance. Haha, <laughs> not really too surprising. But anyways, say ambulance hot na dochoskiren. See what I'll do is I'll translate it. Uh, translate it to three ambulances were dispatched or were ordered. Both of them are correct. Why? Because, well, I mean, dispatch, order, both of them in a certain, to a certain extent, mean the same thing. Uh, you see, I translated it to say ambulance, three ambulances were ordered. You see ambulance in Kurdish, ambulance in English. Okay. Sub restel ser computerimen. It's pretty easy because you know that the word soup in Kurdish is also soup in English. Now you have two of the words that you can transfer from the source language, which is Kurdish in this case. You translated you can you translate it to um, I spelt or sorry, uh, the soup was spelt on my computer. See? The soup was spelt on my computer. Okay, let's go to uh, the last sentence here, right here. Why I skipped the other sentences? Because, well, we have other slides waiting for us. And also, um, I'll give you the space so you translate other sentences because it's also sort of a, sort of a practice. Democrasiat Ramona Berezie Nadat. You see, Democrasiat. Is also democracy in English. Romani Berizina that democracy does not mean disrespect. Something like that. Okay? So democracy does not mean disrespect. You see democrosiet, and in English the equivalent is democracy. Okay, let's move on. This was supposed to be yeah, this is this is your task. You need to do this activity. And what you need to do here is to match the sentences. Um, uh, with their with their co correct e equivalent, okay. You'll just match them. You correct. You, you'll match the correct um, source language to the target language text, okay. 
So maybe I should do one of them. You see, operaciono rozgar kerno musle des peker. Operacion is operation. So you can see this is the answer. Operation saving muscle started. Um, carry on, please. Finish the rest of the activity. Let's go on to translating into English word for word. Now, word for word is you pay attention to the word order of the source language sentence. Whatever the source language sentence is, you need to follow it. Let me give you an example for what I mean. For what I mean. So, buchi rasta kordina. Buchi, why rasta? Are the sentences because you know it's a question you cannot say why the sentence or you, um, you can say that why the sentences are Kurdina in Kurdish why the sentences are in Kurdish so Buchi why Rasta the sentences Kurdina are in Kurdish you see it was word for word they say that this sort of translation is being faithful to the source language grammar now as you saw, I um, stuck to the grammar of the Kurdish language when I translated the sentence. And this is what we call word-for-word -word translation. Um, so, Damo tu chia bazari tizbahan bekra. Damo tu chia bazari tizbahan bekra. So, when Damo do you chia go to the bazaar? Bazari, tazbahan, bikra, buy rosaries. Now, I understand you would say, well, wait a second, you've um, replaced, or maybe you've, you've shifted the places of these two words. You've um, changed the places of these two words. That's fine. That's also considered as word for word translation because you're not, you're not really changing uh, the meaning. You're not resorting to something else other than word for word translation. So damo tu chia bazari when you go to the bazaar. See, tazbahan bitra buy rosaries. In English, you cannot really have the noun. Uh, sorry, the the object having. Sorry, I beg your pardon. It's early morning. I haven't had my coffee, so it's difficult for me to follow up. Anyways, in English, you cannot have the object preceding the verb. In very rare, except in very rare cases, which is the job of your grammar teacher, and they have to teach you. Okay, never believe him. Okay, never believe him. Chijoro, never bower believe juineke. You can say in Kurdish, uh, in English, and never believe him. Yeah, so never believe him. All right, you please kindly. Do the rest of the translation of the following sentences as a mean of practice. Um, this is also the activity. What you need to do in the activity is to see which one um, is the better translation for the Kurdish sentence. So I've given you the Kurdish sentence. You need to choose which one. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Which one is the correct one? Is it the first one or the second one? Um, this is also related to um tenses which again i will not teach you tenses tenses are taught by your grammar teacher and i think third year uh module uh, titled grammar and context i think or no no wait i think it's contrastive grammar they teach you um, important differences between the grammars of the two languages that you translate from and translate to anyways let's carry on to the, the last um, slide here, which is literal translation. There is no difference between literal translation and word for word translation, except in, in that word for word translation, you have to stick to the word order, okay? Word order is really, really important. But literal translation, it's not about the word order, but being faithful to the vocabularies that were used in the source language it means you have to use you have to translate the exact words in the source language into the target language do not use any metaphors do not use anything or any word that could have the meaning of the source language vocabulary let me give you an example if this was word for word translation i would uh, have translated the following sentence um, as the temperature 
today will increase. This would have been the translation or the sentence translated word for word. Yeah? But literal translation, you don't have to stick or be faithful to the word order. You can say, today, yeah, the temperature will increase. You see, although it was the same words that uh, were used in the source language, but it was not the same word order. Unlike word for word translation, word for word translation, you have to stick to the same word order in the source language and uh, relaying it into the target language with the same word order. Okay. Uh, okay, so Tivir Ushelem Hotna Kadarakiran. I understand this is a very silly sentence, but Tivir is radish, Shelem is beet, I think, B E E T. B E E T, yes. Not three E's, by the way, it's only two. So B E E T. Hotna Kadarakiran. Band. Okay, so Tivrushelem, Hotna Kadarakiran. Radishes and beets were banned. Oh, hotna, sorry. Um, have become banned. Have been banned. Okay? So, radishes and beets have been banned. Why I said have been, and I did not say were banned, because have been banned, again, is about translating the tenses correctly. Um, hotna indicates present perfect, something that started in the past and still has uh, meaning in the present. Sorry, something that started in the past and still has some sort of effect or relevance in the present and may continue to the future. So, I translated two sentences. Your task is to translate the rest of the sentences, if you don't mind. Um, that was the last um, slide. These three methods of translation will be used a lot throughout this uh, translation into English course. So please um, make sure that when you translate sentences into English, you use these three types of translation, transference, um, word for a translation, and then finally, uh, literal translation. Dear students, I have also put an activity um, on the module platform, on the Moodle platform, sorry, not module, please read the descriptions. I've given you vocabularies. I've given you the vocabulary meaning of any of the difficult vocabularies. Well, most of the vocabularies which I'm inter interested in, what you need to do is to understand those vocabularies, learn them by heart, memorize them, i.e., um, and then below the vocabularies and their meanings, uh, there are sentences which I kindly ask you to translate into English and submit it by Saturday um, the 10th of October. I think Saturday is the 10th of October. Submit it to me via Moodle and I will grade your papers, grade your work. And believe it or not, the grades will be um, considered on the final grade. Okay? Not the final grade, but it's the, well, Essentially, they will be part of the final grade. It's the 20, the activity, the activities that are from 20. I'll put grades, I'll add the grades on the 20, so starting from then, and then um, other activities will add up until you reach um, your 20 grades for the activities. Thank you very much for listening. If you had any questions um, or any queries, any um, comments, please do let me know via Moodle, or you can tell the class rep and they can tell me directly. Thank you very much, and have a very, very good day. Goodbye.